Today we're exploring a tiny home featuring a 480 square foot cabin-like atmosphere built with 10 foot ceilings and trim board made from 100 year old reclaimed barn wood. We'll also explore this unique outbuilding later in the episode, but what makes this tiny home truly special is the 10 private acres of untouched land it sits on. Let's go take a look. This property is located in Merritt, BC, inside of the Coldwater Estates Ranch. The home itself was built by Rover Tiny Homes in Chilliwack, BC, and was designed to be placed on a permanent foundation like you see here, built to BC's A277 building code. When you first walk into the home, you enter a sort of mudroom here towards the back end. And there's a few things going on in this space. Number one, as you can see off to my right, we have a stacking washer and dryer. Right in front of me is a really cool industrial ladder leading up to a loft space. Just past the laundry here, you're gonna find the master bedroom. And then right behind you guys is where it opens up to the rest of the home. This master bedroom is probably the nicest master bedroom I've ever seen in any tiny home. Everything from the 10 foot ceilings, the warm accents, and these massive windows leading out to your view really makes this space feel super warm and cozy, kind of like a cabin. This room currently has a queen size bed. However, I think you could probably squeeze a king size bed if you wanted to. Off to my left hand side, you have a massive amount of storage space here for all of your clothing. And one thing they integrated throughout the home actually, and it's something I really like, is the cubby spaces above the wardrobe in this room. Oftentimes this would be dead space or it would just be underutilized, but in here you can put away storage items that you don't often need, but they have a place to stay. The bedroom also features a really nice little fireplace at the foot of the bed here. You've got an overhead fan to move the air around. I think my favorite part about this room is how these big windows are encased by that barn wood. It looks really, really awesome. Coming out of the master bedroom, we have access to our loft space. Obviously, there's not tons of room up here. Obviously, you can't stand, but it does serve its purpose. Right now, it's used for more of a storage space more than anything else. But if you had an extra guest with you or some kids, you could definitely throw them up here and utilize this space as a second bedroom. You have lighting in the ceiling here. You also have a window behind me and you have plugins in the wall space up here. So very cool design. Now, as you may have guessed, beneath the loft space, we have the bathroom. One thing I love about this build and where the placement of the laundry is, is that it doesn't take away from any space in the bathroom. A lot of the homes I tour have the laundry center inside of the bathroom simply because there's no place to put it otherwise. But because this home's a little bit bigger, there's space to dedicate solely to the bathroom and to the laundry. Because of this, you get a nice residential sized tub. You get a shower that even I can stand in at 6'4". You get your traditional residential style toilet, vanity, mirror, and these countertops are actually quartz, which you'll also see in the kitchen. All right, this next part, I know a lot of you are going to appreciate. We finally have a closet right after you enter the home. I know a lot of you in my past videos have commented, lots of tiny homes don't actually have like a broom closet or a place to store your boots, your jackets, or anything like that. And here, we finally have it. So that's a huge plus. Right after the closet space, we also have a space for the hot water tank and additional storage space above. And once again, a really cool feature that I mentioned before is that overhead storage space that's often underutilized in most tiny homes, but you have it here. So you have it over the closet, you have it over where they're storing the hot water tank, and you have it over the cupboard space in the kitchen. Next up in the home, we have the kitchen space. And this by far is one of the best places to be. The kitchen area is joined with the living space and together makes this entire room feel very bright and open. In terms of storage space, this kitchen is fully loaded. On the island here, you'll have drawer space to the left. You'll have some traditional storage space underneath the sink here. And then further to my right, you actually get a small dishwasher. Behind me here, you have two large cabinets with adjustable shelving. Below these cabinets and on each side of the oven, you get lower cabinet space and lower drawer space. In addition to this storage space, you also get storage space around the fridge. So over top of the fridge, lots of space in here. And then further to the right, you get pantry storage from almost floor to ceiling here, giving you plenty of room to store all of your food. As mentioned before in the bathroom, you'll see the quartz countertops here in the kitchen as well. And of course, they even included a couple small windows here to let in some of that natural light. This home is also equipped with stainless steel appliances and really gives off the feel that there were no corners cut in this build. Today's sponsor is Mock Wheel, an innovative e-bike brand who are kind enough to send me this the Mock Wheel Basalt. This is a class three electric bike, which means these tires are gonna get you up to 28 miles an hour or faster. 
The bike is powered by a 48 volt 20 amp hour battery and a 1000 watt silent brushless motor. This combined with the torque sensors give you a range of up to 80 miles. Now you might be asking yourself, what on earth are torque sensors? Torque sensors give you power based off of how hard you push the pedals. A cadence sensor, which is the cheaper one of the two, turns the power on as soon as it feels any pedal input. To put it simply, it's either zero power or 100 power. So torque sensors are much better. I'm sure something else you've noticed are these obnoxious 26 by four inch off-road puncture resistant tires that make off-roading on this bike really cool. <laughs> One thing I really like about the design of this bike is that they fit the battery into the crossbar of the bike itself. Some e-bike brands fit it on top of the crossbar, so it just kind of looks clunky, but this just creates a much more sleek design. Some of the key features on this bike include front and rear LED lights, hydraulic disc brakes, a rear cargo rack rated for 55 pounds, a digital speedometer with tons of customizable options, adjustable shocks, a thumb throttle, and it even has a horn. You might ask, who is this for? And I would tell you, literally anybody who likes fun. <gasps> what if I could do a wheelie? Oh! Don't do that. Yeah, my bad. Shit. No, nah, but for real, anybody who has like back issues, knee issues, or any kind of issue that would prevent you from riding a normal bike, this is your best bet. Even my pregnant wife likes it. So if any of you are looking for a super fun and super fast electric bike of really high quality, check out the link in my description. Otherwise, let's get back to the video. Now from a design perspective, I don't think you could get much better than this for a living space. You've got more than enough room on either side of this mantle here to seat yourself, some family and friends. You've got lots of space in the center here to put a big coffee table. And right to the left of me here, you've got your mantle space, a spot to put either art or maybe a TV on the wall. You've got a fireplace below. And obviously one of the best parts about this room is the fact that you have a view straight out the front of your home to that private 10 acre parcel. The attention to detail in here is next level. From the exposed wood shelving on the sides, the wood paneling around the windows, the textured wall behind the picture frame here. They even have these cool rustic bolts into the mantle here as well. They really thought of everything to make this space feel cozy. They really blended the design and functionality when most tiny homes solely focus on the functionality of the home. And this is just proof that you don't have to sacrifice the aesthetic of your home to accommodate for functionality. After touring so many tiny homes, I've got to say, this has got to be one of the best I've stepped foot in. Now, at the beginning of this episode, I did mention this outbuilding behind me. And as you can probably see, it's not an outbuilding, it's a sea can, but let's go check it out. All right. So, if you haven't guessed already, this is actually a second bathroom. So what they've done with this sea can is actually fully insulated it. They finished it off with shiplap in the interior here. They have baseboard heating, full plumbing. And like I just said, this is a second bathroom. Now in the back of this sea can, they have an assortment of different plumbing fixtures back there. They have a 200 amp electrical panel back there as well. And really this just serves as an insulated bathroom, storage room, and the home's mechanical room but I think it's kind of a cool addition to the home itself. It's here seated on a cement pad, fully insulated as you can see by the spray foam on the door and painted black to give it kind of a cool aesthetic on the outside. Thanks so much for watching today. If you're looking for more information on Rover Tiny Homes and anything about this, which is actually for sale on the lot that it sits on, I've linked everything you're gonna need in the description below. Otherwise, thanks again for watching and I'll see you guys next Monday.